Life may still be hard, but at the very least, Mohammed feels safe here in Tunisia. Today, he's picked up a job cleaning a beachside villa, work that helps keep his mind off the horrors he experienced in Libya. If you run away from the militias, they feel free to shoot you because bullets are cheap. Mohammed left his home in Niger because the people of his town were being terrorized by Boko Haram. He'd hoped to cross the Mediterranean and settle in Europe, but after reaching Libya, he found himself stuck in a vicious cycle of violence. Repeatedly captured and beaten by militias who would always demand payment for his release. At one point, he couldn't afford to buy his freedom from one of the armed groups that had imprisoned him. So the fighters found another way to get the money. They sold me. I was sold. Forced to work for the man who bought him, Muhammad was enslaved for months before being freed. I am a human just like him. The only difference between me and him is that God created me with dark skin and he was white. This is not my fault. God created me like this. I was very upset because I didn't hold any value to any of them. I wasn't worth anything to them, as if I'm not even a human being. Like many others in his position, Muhammad eventually made it onto a smuggler's boat, but it never reached Italy. Instead, he ended up in southeastern Tunisia. Humanitarian workers here in Zarzis expect the migration crisis to continue. That's why they're asking the Tunisian government to do more to protect the rights of migrants and refugees. Now, Mohammed lives at a center in nearby Mednin, run by the Tunisian Red Crescent. Dr. Munji Slim, who heads the southern Tunisian branch of the aid organization, says that as long as human traffickers continue to exploit the chaos and conflict in neighboring Libya, things won't improve. The Tunisian authorities have many other issues that they're focusing on, so we hope that the international community will remember these migrants and help them to achieve a solution either with a voluntary return to their countries or with integration or by helping them seek asylum. Even though he's barely making ends meet, Mohammed still feels lucky. To have escaped the kind of trauma most people could never imagine, to be in a place where, despite the difficulties, he says he's being treated like a person. Mohammed Jamjoum Al Jazeera, Zarzis, Tunisia.